the energy. Oh! Hello, everybody. <laughs> listen, what's so, up? I was so listen, not, not planning on getting picked, but here I am. So first things first, I'm 38 years old. Um, I'm from Alabama originally. However, I'm currently in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Okay. Yes. So moving into my question, mm-hmm. I'm nervous. So moving into my question, I'm not new to Christ. I fast. I pray. I go to church. I read my Bible. You know, I feel like I've definitely had interactions with Christ. However, I wanted to talk about desires because I feel like I can't work in the church due to my lifestyle. I've been married to my wife for five years. However, I just feel like it's almost a form of embarrassment, you know, when it's like I have a love in my heart so much for Christ and I want to be like him so much, but it's like I have this almost like a cloud that's over my head when it comes to my lifestyle and religion. And so- Ooh, what a question. I mean, she's swinging like Kenny Griffey Jr. <laughs> All right, so man, we got a crazy one. Apparently, this woman been in a marriage. She's a believer in Christ, grew up in a church, and this video gets pretty, you know, it's a great one, man. Jackie really gives that that biblical approach to it. Um, and man, I think you should hit that like button first of all. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hit the subscribe if you if you're new here. Welcome. <laughs> Jackie Hill, she goes crazy and really goes in depth about uh, sin and how we are to live our lives as believers in Christ. It's a beautiful video. So hit that like, hit that subscribe, and let's get straight to it, man. I just wanted to ask someone who has been delivered and who has, you know, moved past it, their thoughts really i just wanted to ask jackie her thoughts really hold on wait wait, wait. so I, I really need to make sure i understand so you, you're currently mm-hmm. mar- married to a woman mm-hmm. yes how long y'all been married five years five years okay mm-hmm. i want to make sure i got that down jackie mm-hmm. boom uh can i ask a question absolutely yes uh, what i guess where do you stand when with the texts that discuss sexuality and sexual stuff like where you stand with that so ever since I came out, I've, you know, everybody always talk about Leviticus. Everybody always talk about the about Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, the story with Lot and his wife turned into a pillar of salt, so on and so forth. I read it and I fasted on it. And the only thing that comes up for me is that God knew me before he put me in my mother's womb. That's that's what comes up for me. So where do I stand on in reading it? When I read it, I pray on it. But it's still a level of I won't say necessarily conviction, but it's I'm open to whatever God says. Hmm. That's good. And you know, I, I'm interested in believers that always points out Leviticus, the Levitical law. Not that we have we ought to do away with it, but I'm surprised people don't mention Romans when Paul speaks about this in the New Testament. You know what I'm saying? He speaks and gives a list about trading in the natural use for why God created man and woman. You know what I'm saying? I'm just surprised at that, but but wow. <laughs> and I don't I don't have a kind of like a a guilt, I would say. Like most people want me to feel guilty. I don't have a guilt. And I'm yeah. trying to be as transparent as possible and get my thoughts together because I'm nervous. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just yeah. to answer the question, I don't necessarily have a lot of thoughts about it. I just pray on it yeah. because mm-hmm. I don't know s- specifically what's right and wrong. Because in today's time, you have a lot of people who say love is love. And then you have a lot of people who say, well, no, according to the Bible, this that's the reason why I read the Bible so much. But tonight y'all talked about praying and asking the Holy Spirit to intervene as you're reading the Bible. And I have done that. And so I just don't know if I'm doing it right. I don't know. 
So I'll say I, I'm encouraged by your transparency and your honesty, especially on a subject that can come across very polarizing, mm -hmm. um, where you can receive a lot of judgment and criticism, especially in conversation with me. And so not not like I'm a judge, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that takes a lot of courage for you to do what you did. Um, I think what I would what I would say is, is that I think a very difficult thing when it when it comes to faith and especially faith, that means like. I remember there was a time in my life where I felt like the Lord was speaking very clearly to me and saying that you have to trust me even when it doesn't line up with how you feel. OK. Mm -hmm. And so there is a sense in which the text says what the text says. We can argue about it. But, you know, you do have Leviticus 18. You do have First Corinthians 6. You do have Timothy. You have Genesis 1 and 2 even. Right. I think though I don't even think you disagree with that necessarily. It just mm -hmm. it doesn't resonate in your affections yet. And that's where mm -hmm. faith comes in. Mm -hmm. Faith says even though it doesn't feel feel like anything like even if it doesn't feel true I might have some type of intellectual awareness of it I just have mm -hmm. to trust you mm -hmm. and I think trusting God especially in the position that you're in is costly um, it will hurt it will uh, cost you many things but it won't it won't cost you your soul mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. because even oh yeah I don't know what's up with this video it is blurry is black is uh, bl black and white is in and out I don't know Oh, your soul. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. And I think oftentimes a lot of believers are so harsh, especially online. It's almost like, yo, do y'all evangelize for real in person? And what's your methods? Because let's not forget, these are still people, human beings. And it's easy for us to say, don't, 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 don't. But when you really think about this woman living in love whether we agree if it's real love or not living with this person sharing bills or whatever the case is and really uh building something that can be extremely hard to leave because it's a, a it, it's cooling to the flesh right we still gotta approach it with humility and biblically and with some patience, like sanctification takes time. Let's be honest. And I think a lot of issues I be having with believers is like this. Uh, you grew up in a church and you know the Bible and you're you're in you're in a woman. How? Duh, bro. It's like, let's not forget. We have awareness. We're walking certain ways because of God, God's grace. It's because the work God is doing in us. It's because God, it's because God is keeping us. It has nothing to do with us for real, for real. If we really like being frank about it, um, we're under His will, tr uh, putting our trust in Him and letting Him take the will for real. And He's the one doing the work in our lives and our heart, not us. You know what I'm saying? Paul said, "Wow, no, that's crazy. It is crazy. Wait, wait, can can you still hear my voice?" Yes, I hear you. Oh, she's still oh she can still hear you, Jackie. You hear Keep me? flowing. Okay. Keep flowing. So, so Paul said, uh, I count everything, everything as loss mm -hmm. compared to the surpassing value yeah. of knowing Christ Jesus. We know that text, but we don't meditate on that text. He said that God is valuable and yes. he's a value that surpasses all other things that we value. So even in your life, even in your heart, I don't want you to think so much about your sexuality. I don't want you to think so much about your wife. I want you to think, do I value God above all things? Do I value yeah. him in my time? Do I value him in my mind? Do I value him in my heart? Do I value him with my finances? Do I value him with my speech? That will actually put your mm -hmm. entire heart and life in perspective mm -hmm. where you will see maybe there's actually many things God wants me to give up, not just this. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, so it is. You said speech, and that is something that has been in my spirit for months now. God has been telling me to pay attention to the things that I say. So I'm currently reading a book by Joyce Myers that says, change your words, change your life. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you said that is even more confirmation that it's something that I'm saying that is possibly maybe holding me hostage. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to keep praying on it. But. Yeah, I think there could be many idols, mm -hmm. to be honest, um, and idols do fog us so that fogginess will clear once you surrender 
Mm. But you you have to define what that's what you're surrendering. Gotcha. Phenomenal phenomenal feedback because I, I wouldn't even have known what it's what it would it take that one. I, I'm just really curious um, because I think you're mm-hmm. the first person ever since we've probably done the show that came up and, and was honest about being, you know, married to a woman. But in anywhere, when you've contemplated on this, has it been anywhere in the solution to potentially think about leaving your wife? Mm. Mm. So my biggest thing is when I, I, if I take it back just a little bit, not to save up so much, not to take up so much time, but I was raised in a church, born and raised in a church, every revival, just in the church as a child. And so when these things start coming up in me as early as what? 14, 15, 16, never been raised around gay people. I know a lot of people say it's influence and all of that. None of that, never, you know, just none of that. And so very early on in my life, I've always prayed for God to take it away. Lord, just take it away. Just, you know, just deliver me, oh God, you know, and never acted on anything until I was in my early 20s very late in life. Well, I consider late in life when it comes to dating and things like that. So my wife knows how I feel about Christ and the importance that it is and how I walk and lead my life. And so one thing that I always tell her is that I'm always going to leave room for Christ always. And so that's understood in my marriage is that Christ comes before all things however is you know i could be like other you know religious leaders and just be single for the rest of my life however it's just i choose to love but i do i am honest with my wife and i did tell her that i leave space for christ so if it comes to a point that we have to separate or divorce or me leave her that would just be a conversation that it just will be and I think that's where Christ comes in when he talks about hating, um, you know, our brother, sister, whoever, because it's not a, oh, I hate, a, a, what, what's the word? Abhor, abhor, abhor. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. What God says he hates evil in that way. It's not that type of hate. Rather, it's a different hate. And it's like if we're not allowing the Lord to be lord of our lives then bro we're gonna see everything dismantled he literally has to be lord of our life he has to be first over everything you know what i'm saying and it's not easy because we create many idols our phones whatever it is in our lives but he we can't choose anything over the the lord at all bro (laughs) you know what i'm saying he's the creator of all things he's the reason we are even experiencing these things so how dare we try to put this over him who's who should be lord of our lives man yeah i would this is this will be a little hard but i i I think it will be helpful uh the the bible has a sentence that says that there are people who have a form of godliness Mm. and deny its power Mm. and what that means is they have a kind of affection for the things of god for the word, for prayer, for church, but they lack the power that actually makes the form reality. Mm -hmm. And I think when I hear you, I hear that. Um, And so I would take that text to the Lord. I would read scripture and I would ask the question, do I love him? More than Mm -hmm. anything, do do I love him? And I think that will answer a lot. I think another thing that you said that really stuck out to me was moving in faith and having faith and Hebrews 11 came up for me um, because we see in here right that faith is the reality of what we hope for a proof of what is not seen sorry to cut it off so soon but yo I remember when the Lord opened my eyes when I was reading the scripture because I read Hebrews read it again but then when I read it again the Lord was opening my eyes and by faith was popping out of the pages I kept seeing by faith, by faith. It was like by faith. Faith stood out to me. And that's when God was transforming my heart to really understand what salvation really is. The work that God really does. And how it's really 
about the Lord. You know what I'm saying, man? So some, like to me, it's like the things that you, you may not see your way out of that. You may not feel your way. Like, I don't feel these things. I don't see this. I don't see how this is going to work. But it's mm-hmm. faith that that like if you keep going on and the scripture always gets me excited, but it's like by faith, Abraham, by faith, Enoch, by faith, mm-hmm. Noah, by faith, like it's mm-hmm. by faith that they were able to do something that didn't feel good or didn't make sense. Like Abraham was asked to crucify his son Mm -hmm. nicole just also curious here is is your wife a christian yes okay and and this is this is a very important question this i want to ask this Mm -hmm. jackie what are your thoughts because she says that christ is she made it clear that christ is always at the priority with her wife at the top of the relationship can christ truly be at the priority and be at the helm of a homosexual relationship or marriage no no um and I, I say that with uh, heaviness, because I feel like a lot of people, you know, are so uh, quick to condemn, not realizing that that there is grief attached to repentance, right? He just killed. Sorry, the fly. that was that was that crazy was with his hand. That was impressive. <laughs> he just killed the fly with his hand. That was. <laughs> and that hand. fly has been tormenting us yeah, this whole time. So oh that's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all. Crash <laughs> down. Go ahead. It's we having the most sensitive conversation in the world. He killed a flat. I'm sorry, that was great. <laughs> no, but I say I say that with weight and pause because I think some people can be quick to condemn mm-hmm. and not realizing that there is a level of grief that comes with repentance. To gouge out the eye hurts. Mm-hmm. To cut off the hand hurts. Mm-hmm. It's painful. And so for me to say to someone. I don't think Christ is as central as you think Mm -hmm. hurts to say, but I do think it's true. One, the 10 commandment says like the first commandment is to love God, to not have any idols before him. Even Matthew, uh, when when they asked Jesus, what, what, like, what is the most important commandment? He says to love the Lord God with all your, all of your heart, Mm -hmm. all of your mind, all of your soul, the law and the prophets hinge on these two things. Mm -hmm. And so there is a sense where I cannot be actively functionally in sin and loving God. That's what the Bible calls double minded. Mm -hmm. And so I say that Mm -hmm. with sensitivity because that's what, that's what deception is. Like that doesn't feel like double mindedness. Like it, it feels like normal, right? Yeah. But it's it just that that's why we have the scriptures to give us clarity on what God yeah. actually commands of us. And what he commands is righteousness. Yeah. And he's very clear about how we love him. Yeah. Like it literally, like he says it explicitly. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Yeah. Period. So we cannot say that we love the Lord and actively go against his commandments. And and since we're here, I have to say this. And since we're here, I have to say in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, which is one of my favorite verses, it begins by saying, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? How Mm -hmm. does he define unrighteous? Do not be deceived. Keyword, he wrote this to a church, to the church mm-hmm. of Corinth. So this ain't even to the world. So that means that people in the church might be deceived on God's law as it relates to sexual sin. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually or moral, so that includes fornicators, porn addicts, masturbators, okay? Like y'all ain't off the hook, nor <laughs> adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. That's not a noun, that's a verb. So it means actively engaging in homosexual mm-hmm. sin is the problem, not being tempted by it and still resisting, okay? Woo. Let me know what y'all think about this video in the comments below. Praise for that sister, man. Let me know some things which I struggle with. I had a crazy season. Uh, not, excuse me, not season, but my life has been a battle with lust. Um, and sometimes I find myself still having an issue with it. Um, not physically doing things, but just visually seeing things, right? Being online. And it could be a fight sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And man, thank God for his grace, for his patience. And I think we should continuously pray for each other, bro. Continuously trust in the Lord, continuously reading our Bible, continuously relying on the Lord, because we could try and try and try as much as possible. But if we're not relying on the Lord to be our strength, then we're just going to keep draining ourselves, bro. We need God for everything. You know what I'm saying? He created us. He's the only one who could fix us. So let me know what you think about this. 
hit that like, hit that share. Pray for our sisters and our brothers in Christ struggling with these things, man. And may the grace of the Lord be with you, my friends. Shalom.